into it, folks. Let's jump right into our NBA Top 10 Power Rankings talk through. We're going to take a team at a time, and we're going to be looking for some key factors on who, on how we rank these teams 1 through 10. So this is how we're going to do it, folks. I already have um, the 14 teams that we're going to be talking about that can get a chance, a spot in the Top 10. And we're taking it by um, basically the top, uh, we took the top six of the Eastern and Western Conferences. And then we added the Raptors because I've loved what they've been doing as of recently. Eight and two in their last ten, so they're truly getting it done. And I also took the Timberwolves, who are also kind of right on the uh, edge of playing tournament or a guaranteed playoff spot. So we have the top six in the Eastern or Western Conference. We had the, or I guess, top seven. We did take the seven through one, one through seven in each Eastern and Western Conference. And those are going to be the teams that get a chance uh, to kind of plead their case and why they should be in the top 10. Now, we're not doing the Nets. I'm done with the Nets, folks. I'm over the Nets with Kyrie Irving playing every other game. Uh, Kevin Durant injured, banged up. And Ben Simmons, I don't know how well he's going to work here with Steve Nash in this Nets team. So I'm not even giving this Nets team any credit, folks. They will not be in our inaugural top 10 at the All-Star break. They can work their way in the top 10, absolutely. But I'm not starting them out anywhere near the top 10. They are so lackluster besides uh, uh, Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. So, shout out to Seth Curry and Andre Drummond for winning a game. I think they won one when they were out on the floor. We love that. But um, everything else on that team is just so gosh dang garbage. Uh, so, we're not even putting the Nets even inside the top 10, folks. Not even entertaining that idea. I do, I do not care. I, this Nets team, um, because you've got Durant, <laughs> because you have Durant coming back, because Ben Simmons, who hasn't played this entire year and still can't shoot, he's going to work well with this team. Well, let me see it before. Before I start believing it. So not even entertaining the Nets. Um, I was close to entertaining the Hawks. Uh, but they kind of floundered. They hit a nice stretch. But then they kind of floundered right before the All-Star break. So they're going to have to still kind of prove themselves after the All-Star break. If they want to crack the top 10. And then here we go in the Western Conference. There's really, I mean, the Clippers, no. The Lakers, absolutely not. And the Blazers, they're, no, they're not even close to kind of cracking the top 10. So we're only kind of taking the top 14 teams in the NBA at the current moment at the All-Star um, midway point of the season. And we'll talk it all through. And how we're going to do it is we, we've got them ranked. Uh, well, not ranked, but we have that. We're going to be talking about them in order of kind of their win percentage and their record. So, you know, the kind of the teams with the best record are in the forefront here. And as we go and talk through them, you know, we'll see. We'll put, you know, the Suns, that's going to be the first team we're talking about. We'll put the Suns number one, and then, you know, number two, I think, is the Warriors, and we'll see. Compared to the Suns, you know, are they better? Are they worse? Do we keep the Suns at the one? Do we keep the Warriors at the two? And then we'll just keep going and going down the list until we've talked through all 14 teams. We have our solidified top 10, and uh, that will be our official kind of starting point of power rankings to the back end of the season throughout the playoffs and all of that. <clears throat> now, some key factors we're going to be keying in on um, as we talk through these teams. We're going to be counting quality wins throughout the year. How many quality wins do you have? And quality wins are going to be teams in the top six. Teams that are in a guaranteed playoff spot at the current moment. Playing tournament teams, we're not going to count those as quality wins. So we're going to take quality wins into consideration. We're going to be taking into account the team's big three. Every team, if you want a chance to win in this league, you must have a big three. So what is the team's big three? How are they looking and all that? And then the depth ability. I need to see some depth on these teams. I can't just have a great starting lineup or a great big three and then everything else is trash. And a little bit of the Timberwolves. That's a little bit where we get into the Timberwolves area. They got a fantastic big three. Everything else is a little bit too inconsistent for us to truly love but you know we'll still talk about the Timberwolves because they have kind of earned it <clears throat> 
um, uh, being kind of number seven here in the Western Conference and, you know, just being good. Anthony Edwards kind of floundering in the back end uh, to the all-star break, kind of letting us down a little bit. But we'll see if this Timberwolves team can crack the top ten. So we've got quality wins. We've got uh, big three, how that looks. We've got the depth ability. And uh, we'll count blowout losses. Any blowout losses kind of leaving a bad taste in our mouth, and that will be maybe our fourth metric we use on how we kind of order and rank these teams. So, with all that being said, let's jump right into our first team to talk about, and that's the team with the best record in the NBA at the current moment, the Phoenix Suns. Wow, wow. Chris Paul having, is this Chris Paul's best season, folks, of recently? We know he's, uh, you know, a little bit maybe potentially ready to age out of the league a little bit. Let me quickly get, what do we got with Chris Paul? 36. I just want to see his overall stats currently quickly uh, compared to last season and all that. So Chris Paul at the current moment, 36, man, oh, man, and still going strong. So averaging 14 and 10, man, oh, man, double-digit assists. This is the double-digit assist, 10-plus assists, assists for the first time since 2015, 2016. So in the last Five, six years, folks. Chris Paul is back to averaging 10 plus assists, 10 plus assists. The points aren't that great or that impressive, but that's why he's got Devin Booker and that's why he's got DeAndre and he really just needs to be a point guard out on the floor for the Suns team. So we get Chris Paul playing at his best at the current moment. Gotta love it. Uh, so let's quickly see what we've got for the Suns team in quality wins. Quality wins are against the Heat, the Bulls, the 76ers, the Cavs, the Bucks, the Celtics in the Eastern Conference. In the Western Conference, a quality win is against the Warriors, the Grizzlies, the Jazz, the Mavericks, and the Nuggets. How many wins do the Suns have against those good teams? So here we go. Every team that they've beat so far this season. We've got the Lakers. Lakers, the Cavs, that's one, the Pelicans, the Rockets, the Hawks, the Kings, the Blazers, the Grizzlies, that's another one. The Rockets, the Timberwolves, the Mavericks, the Mavericks twice, back-to-back, -back, that's two. The Nuggets, that's another one. We got the Spurs, the Cavs again, the Knicks, the Nets, the Warriors, that's another one. Man, oh, man. Uh, the Pistons, they lose against the Warriors in their other meeting. Uh, they beat the Spurs, the Celtics, that's another quality win. The Blazers, the Wizards, the Hornets, the Lakers, the Thunder, the War. Oh, no, they lose to the Warriors. Ooh, the Warriors, a little bit of their kryptonite a little bit. Uh, they lose against the Grizzlies the uh, second time around. They lose against, uh, they beat the Thunder. They lose against the Celtics the next time around. They beat the Hornets, the Pelicans, the Clippers, the Raptors, the Pacers, the Pistons, the Spurs, the Mavericks again. Nice. Uh, beating the Pacers, beating the Jazz twice back to back. Fantastic. We're at 11 points so far. Uh, then they beat the Timberwolves, the Spurs, the Nets. They lose to the Hawks. They beat the Wizards. They beat the Bulls. The 76ers, a quality win. The Bulls, a quality win. The Bucks, a quality win. They beat the Magic, the Clippers, and the Rockets to end out the first half of the season. And we are at 14 quality, great wins against this Suns team, or for this Suns team. So, absolutely fantastic there. Beating the better teams, the upper echelon of teams here. Have they really got blown out any uh, blowouts? Really, 10 or more points. We get a 9-point loss against the Hawks. Um, anything else here? The 23 point loss against the Heat. We'll save, um, <clears throat> we'll save bad losses for a, uh, a kind of tiebreaker. I don't want to kind of go through and talk points and math, quick math and all that. Um, so we get this Suns team at 48 wins. They've got 14 quality wins against good teams out here. And now the roster of, of the Celtics, uh, of the Celtics Suns team, Jesus, Louise, uh, the the depth chart of this Suns team, their big three, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton. I can rock with that big three, absolutely. Chris Paul, the facilitator, Devin Booker, the scorer, and then we got DeAndre Ayton, the beef down low, who can defend, and then also put up some points here. What do we got with Devin Booker, or DeAndre Ayton? Is this man averaging, I want to say he's averaging like 15 and 10, is that correct? 16 and 10, look at that. So, <clears throat> offensively, getting it done defensively, grabbing the boards, DeAndre Ayton. Not a tier one big, not as, you know, offensive gifted as Joel Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns and Jokic and all that 
uh, Giannis and all that, obviously. <clears throat> but a really good tier two big. And then uh, we having <clears throat> having Jay Crowder at the four, solid defender. You know, the three is a little bit spotty, a little bit up and down, a little bit of hit and miss. But overall, that defense, <clears throat> we get McCall Bridges, another great offensive score. And then this batch of having Cameron Payne and Landry Shamid and Cameron Johnson and Torrey Craig. Shout out to Torrey Craig. This man doesn't get enough love. But just to kind of be like the fifth or um, the, the seventh, eighth, ninth option, having Aaron Holland. Today, bringing him in at the trade deadline, another great depth piece, JaVel McGee, folks, we're talking about the bigs here, JaVel McGee aging out of this league, uh, I want to say the man's like 38, he's only 34, JaVel McGee's only 34, is that right? All right, I give this man credit, uh, but averaging nine and six, ten and seven, round them up. They're both at point nines. Ten and seven coming off the bench, folks. This is fantastic, great depth and great production. JaVale McGee truly getting it done. So this uh, Suns team is really checking all the boxes, and we will put them at the number one seed at the current moment. Now, when we do the next team, we'll kind of compare it to the Suns. Where do we see them and all that? But the Suns team is really checking every single box. And I want to say this Suns team is better than what the Suns were last season. And they were very good. They got to the finals and all that. But I believe that experience, I, I, we're getting just kind of uh, lethal Chris Paul at this point in the season, folks. He's not gimmicky. He, there's no spot, smiles. There's no fun. He's not kind of goofing off and joking this man wants the ring when you get to the finals and experience it that's when it all sets in Chris Paul never being there in his career before last season and now we get this lethal killer instinct Chris Paul this season and that's the Chris Paul we all love to see so this truly could be the Suns year entering the back end of the season but we're gonna need Devin Booker to really get it done Devin Booker is their main scorer here here. He's, he's the one that is really kind of offensively forward. Chris Paul, he can go for like 25 a game. He can do that, but that's not truly his game. More about 14 points, what he's averaging right now. 14 and 10, fantastic. Uh, you know, DeAndre Ayton, he can be kind of that 25 a night down low in the paint score as well. But once again, that's not really his game. He's not really like Bam out of bio like that. That can be kind of a little bit more aggressive offensively. Um, but so Devin Booker is really going to have to kind of shore it up and be that 25 to 30 point a night score here. Now, the Suns team does have the bench to get it done offensively. Literally, everybody can score on this bench. Uh, Cameron Payne, Cameron Johnson, Landry Shamit, Torrey Craig. JaVale McGee, Aaron Holiday. I mean, they, they've got pieces, folks. They are a very great depth team here, deep team. And then you still get Dario Sherrick. Is this man ever coming back? Is this man ever playing? So, I mean, they've even got more depth at the big position if needed. So the Suns team is truly freaking deep, but we just need Devin Booker to be that main offensive guy consistent every single night, and we know he can do that. Um, so the Suns team at the current number one spot, we'll see if they lose it, but man, oh man, the Suns team, they are checking all the boxes. Absolutely fantastic. So Suns, we got them at the first position. But now let's go to the second best team record-wise in the league, and that's the Golden State Warriors. Now, they have just been floundering here like the last two and a half, maybe even the last three weeks. Steph Curry's not looking like anything Steph Curry-like. The three not falling like it usually is, and when it's not falling, uh, it's a little bit of a glaring issue for the Warriors. We've also had... Draymond Green be out for a while, and he is so undervalued, folks. So disrespected in the sports media, uh, social media, all that. Draymond Green is a huge key to this Warriors team. The leadership, the defense, uh, the floor IQ. He's a little bit of a floor general, and he's at the four spot, folks. Um, so he really checks all the boxes, and uh, you know we see this Warriors team not be as good without Draymond Green on the floor than what they are with him on the floor. So give Draymond Green so much more credit than what y'all have been giving him. Uh, they don't really have a good big to begin with. They got Kavon Looney. Shout out to Jonathan Kaminga at the four, truly stepping it up here ever since Draymond Green has truly went down. But they don't have that depth. They don't have that big. They don't have that beef. That's why they truly need 
uh, Draymond Green back as soon as possible. Now, do we have any timetable on Draymond Green's return? Are we just waiting till after the All-Star break, or is it a little bit longer? Uh, Warriors accused of lying about Draymond Green's injury. Oh, this was 23 hours ago. No, no. The Golden State Warriors are titled contenders if Draymond Green is healthy, but one NBA insider has doubts about whether he will be again. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get this. Um, has serious doubts about whether he will be again at any point this season. Oh, my goodness. ESPN senior senior writer Brian Windhorse appeared on part of the interruption with Tony Conizer and Michael Wilbon Tuesday, February, uh, February 15th. Uh, the host asked Windhorse which franchise he believes is a favorite to emerge. He says, quote, I'm not sure about Draymond Green's injury. I know that they have said that they think he'll be back, but the Warriors track record of telling the truth on injuries this year has not been good. So yeah, we really can't even count on Draymond Green being back this season. So that's true. Truly going to hurt the Warriors. We know Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, they're great. And, you know, they can on any given night, you know, go off and pop off and carry the entire team. You still got Jordan Poole coming off the bench, you know, great. Another guard that can score the ball. We all saw Jordan Poole in the starting lineup when Klay Thompson wasn't ready to go this season, getting it done. So we believe in the guards, absolutely. But we don't really have any bigs here. And what are they in their last 10? Because they have been floundering before the All-Star break. We get this Warriors team 6-4 and four in their last 10. That ain't good. Lost their last two games here. And that's not good. That's not what you want to see as kind of the second best record-wise team in the league like this. So, Warriors. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Steph Curry's going to have to get out of this shooting funk. Absolutely. If they want to even have a chance of making it without Draymond Green. Alrighty, so that's their roster. It's good. Obviously, whenever you have Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, you're always in Steve Kerr at the you know head coaching position, leadership leadership position, high IQ there at, at the coaching spot. Whenever you have those three, I mean, you're always going to be in the game. You're obviously going to be in the game. You're going to be in the media. You're going to be in the news. You're going to be in the game. You're going to be hitting shots. We know this. It's just, are you going to be able to win a seven game series? Are you going to be able to beat a team like the Suns? Are you going to be able to beat a team um, like the you know uh, when, if you have to face the 76ers? In the finals, if that does come to be, will you be able to go toe to toe with Joel Embiid with no Draymond Green with just Kevon Looney down low? Is that going to be something that's possible to win the ring? I don't know, folks. I truly don't know. It's a bigs league. This is a bigs world. This is a bigs world, and it'd be nothing, nothing without a big and a big. <laughs> you need two. You need two bigs, but one big should suffice. Uh, but it's a bigs world, folks. Okay. All right, let's count these quality wins for this Warriors team, shall we? Here we go. Quality wins, what we count as uh, top six teams in the Eastern and Western Conference at the All-Star all break. So here we go. We got wins against the Lakers, the Clippers, the Kings, the Thunder, the Thunder, the Hornets, the Pelicans, the Rockets, the Hawks, the Timberwolves, the Bulls. There it is. There it is. Quality win number one right there. They beat the Nets. They beat the Cavs. Quality win. We get the Pistons, the Raptors, the 76ers. Quality win. The Blazers, the Clippers, the Suns. Quality win. The Magic, the Blazers, the Pacers, the Knicks, the Celtics. Quality win. The Kings, the Grizzlies. Quality win. The Suns. Quality win. The Jazz. Quality win. The Heat. Quality win. The Maver uh, No, they lose against the Mavericks. They beat the Cavs again. Quality win. We're at ten. Uh, the Bulls. Quality win. The Rockets, the Jazz, quality win. The Mavericks, a quality win. The Timberwolves, the Nets, the Rockets, the Spurs, the Kings, the Thunder, the Lakers, the Clippers. No, they lost against the Clippers. So we got 13 quality wins here for this Warriors team. And it was, did I do two sets of five? Man, counting on one hand, not the greatest. Uh, is that seven or 13 or eight or 13? Uh, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let me see if I can get the five quickly. We got the uh, we got the Cavs. Going back quickly, folks. Cavs, 76ers, Suns, Celtics, Grizzlies. Yeah, okay. 13, 13. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So thir is that 13? Do I have to? Oh, okay. Sorry, folks. And I apologize. I know I'm counting and all that. Um, all right. Let's see if I can actually keep track of my fingers this time. One last time for the quality wins over for this Warriors team. Here we go. We've got the Bulls, the Cavs, the 76ers, 
the Suns. The Celtics again. There it's five. That's a five mark right there. Then we're the Suns at six. The Jazz at seven. The Heat, that's eight. Yeah, we're at 13. All right, 13. Cavs make a nine, so yeah. All right, 13 quality wins for this Warriors team. So can't say that this Warriors team is better than the Suns. So we will put this Warriors team at the number two spot. And uh, man, oh man, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to kind of hope these other teams are a little bit worse than them because I don't know if this Warriors team is gonna be keeping this two spot for long. But let's see who our next team to discuss up is, and it's the Grizzlies. And man, oh man, have I been so impressed by this Grizzlies team, folks? Getting rid of Valanciunas was the best thing for this Grizzlies team, and how crazy is that? As we're entering this big league, this new big league. They get rid of an offensive, little bit of great offensive dominant big in Valanchunas. Shout out to Valanchunas. And he's making it work with the Pelicans, folks. So he's still getting his. But they replace Valanchunas with Steven Adams. Steven Adams is not an offensive big. He's a good defensive big. Very good defensive big. Definitely down low as well. Uh, but not, obviously, the likeness of Joel Embiid, Jokic, Giannis. Uh, Vucevic, get that man in there as well. So, obviously, we know Steven Adams scoring is not his game. That's fine. But this Memphis Grizzlies team is still top three teams in the league record-wise. So, shout out to that. And that's just because John Morant, the big leader, facilitator on the floor, and then having so much depth. This Grizzlies team is deep dish pizza, folks. The starting five, John Morant, Desmond Bain, Zaire Williams, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Steven Adams. But then off the bench, we get Tyus Jones. Anthony Melton, uh, Kyle Anderson, Brandon Clark, Xavier Tillman once he comes back. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about nine deep here, potentially ten deep out here that can all score the ball. Everybody on this Grizzlies team really can kind of shoot. So, Grizzlies team really deep. John Morant having a season. Man's having a season. What do we got? Averaging 26 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists. Fantastic. This man's playing better than he did last season. Is this correct or no? Let me see. Can I quickly bring up this man's last season? Can I just get this man's last season? Um, Here it is. This is 2021. What is he averaging here? 2021. The man's averaging 26 five and seven go back to last season we get his averages here uh total season 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 just want the average on the season how hard is that man oh man <clears throat> all right regular season stats averaging here we go 19 Seven, 19, 4, and 7. So, yeah, I mean, the points are way up from last season to this season. Facilitating the floor is still on that same level. Rebounding even up here. So, yeah, John Morant having a, such a great season this year. Able to kind of play more free because they freed up the ball dominant big down low of Valanchunas and uh, you know not not the most ball dominant but we know he's putting up the points and he's definitely getting it done and you know he was a you know huge pick and roll with John Morant and all that but now John Morant a little bit more free or can just shoot it to all the guards doesn't have to worry about you know feeding Steven Adams the ball down low because he's not scoring anyway so he can get all the other kind of uh, bench role players um, involved into the game Hitting the threes, hitting the outside shots. So this Grizzlies team, folks, is truly, truly gosh dang great. Now, let's count their quality wins. Are they actually beating the good teams or are they just kind of, you know, you know, mopping up the bad teams and that's where they're getting all their wins from? So here we go. Currently, the Suns are kind of in the first place with 14 quality wins. Let's see if the Grizzlies can get something along those lines. So here we go. The Grizzlies have the wins against the Cavs. That's a quality win. And that's game number one, baby. Coming out strong. Coming out hot. Two-game winning streak. Yes, sir. <laughs> And then they lose their next two. But that's besides the point. They're second or they're third in the uh, Western Conference. Shout out to this team. All right, here we go. Quality wins. We got a wins against the Cavs, against the Warriors, against the Nuggets twice back to back. We get a wins against the Timberwolves, the Rockets, the Clippers, the Jazz, another quality win. The Kings, the Raptors, the Thunder, the Mavericks, a quality win. The Heat, another quality win. The Lakers, the Rockets, the 76ers, quality win. We're at eight at the current moment, so we don't lose track again. 
All right, then we get the Blazers, the Kings. We got wins against the Kings. The Suns, another quality win. The Cavs, another quality win. The Clippers, the Lakers, the Warriors, another quality win. The Timberwolves, they beat the Bulls, another quality win. They beat the Nuggets, another quality win. They beat the Jazz, another quality win. They beat the Wizards, the Knicks, the Magic, the Clippers, the Pistons, the Hornets, the Pelicans. And that's their last win. So another 14 quality wins here for the Grizzlies. Yes, yes, they're not just beating the scrubs, folks, and their deep dish pizza. I'm moving this Warriors team to number three, and I'm putting the Grizzlies right there at number two. Yes, sir. Love this Grizzlies team so gosh dang much, folks. And shout out to John Morant for having an exceptional season so far. Hopefully he can keep it up after the All-Star break. I'm seeing he can. So absolutely, we're putting the Grizzlies at number two. Love what we've seen from them. All righty, here we go. Up The next team up here, we're going the Miami Heat. All righty, now, this Heat team, a little bit of floundering, a tad, not a too much. What do we got in there last time? Um... We got six and four in their last time. You know, kind of, you know, a little bit inconsistent the last two weeks of the regular season here. Um, and this was big time disappointing because there was an era, folks, about maybe a month ago where this Heat team was so deep. They were deep. They were dogs. They were kind of having many kind of um, outs on a nightly basis in the starting lineup, having to bring their bench to the starting lineup in the uh, kind of bench in the starting lineup was getting it done. The role players were getting getting it done. Shout out to Max Struess. He was one of them getting it done. Uh, who else do we have getting it done? We had Gabe Vincent a couple of games getting it done. Omer Yurtsevin, you know, filling in at the starting lineup here and there, getting it done. Kayla Martin truly getting it done on a couple of games as well. So we've seen this bench truly step up when they needed to, but as of recently, the last two weeks, that has not really been the case. So we'll see if they can kind to get back to the glory of what made them so good. I think the Heat started to kind of buy into their own hype a little bit um, with everybody kind of being good. Oh, and even Kyle Guy, shout out to that man. He had a great game or two in the starting lineup when they needed to call upon him. So, I mean, they were going to have, they were going kind of 11 deep out here, uh, folks. So, uh, this kind of, I think the Heat team kind of started to buy into that because everybody, you know, we called them dogs. We were tweeting that out. We were kind of betting them every single game. And the national media was kind of, you know, talking very highly about this Heat team as well during that stretch. And I think they just kind of truly bought into their own hype. And after that, ugh, ugh, a little bit of lackluster, losing games they probably shouldn't have, not dominating in as many games, going down to the wire, having big leads, and then losing those big leads, still closing out the game. Games, but I mean you had a big lead you lost a big lead in the second half like what is that let's play a full full quarters of basketball together shall we so we love the heat starters Kyle Lowry great Jimmy Butler you know doing it all we get Bam out of bio down low at the five. I mean, good, big, being more aggressive every single season, and this season still being aggressive. Duncan Robinson, the stats say he's fantastic, but uh, I don't really see him being too impactful offensively. He's a good defender. I will give him that. But offensively, he can definitely be a little bit more consistent, in my opinion. I know the stats kind of disagree with that, but you know, just watching this man on every single game, on how this Heat team wins and his production in the wins compared to the losses and all all that. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't agree with the overall statistical narrative around Duncan Robinson. We get Tyler Hero been out for the last couple of games as well. He's been fantastic this season, resorting back to what he did in the bubble. So that's fantastic. Um, but yeah, the C team leaving a little bit of a bad taste in our mouth as we entered the all-star break here. Let's quickly count their quality wins. Do they have any quality wins? I think they have some, folks. Let's see how many they have. So here we go. The Heat. Heat quality wins. Let's see what we got. They start out the season beating the Bucks. Fantastic win. That's a quality win. They beat the Magic, the Nats, the Hornets, the Grizzlies. Quality win. The Mavericks, a quality win. The Jazz, a quality win. 
They beat the Jazz again, another quality win. We got wins against the Thunder, the Pelicans, the Wizards, the Pistons, the Bulls, quality win. Uh, the Pacers, the Bucks, another quality win. The Bulls, another quality win. We are at eight. The 76ers, a quality win. That's nine. Uh, they beat the Magic, the Pacers, the Pistons, the Magic, the Wizards, the Rockets. They beat the Blazers. They beat the Suns. That's ten. Ding, ding, ding. They beat the Hawks twice in a row. Uh, we beat the, uh, they beat the Raptors. They beat the Blazers. They beat the Lakers, the Knicks, the Clippers. They beat the Spurs, the Hornets, the Wizards, the Pelicans, the Nats, the Hornets. So, yeah, we haven't really called a big-time quality win. When was their last big-time quality win? January 8th. So, I mean, it's been about a month, folks. I mean, they lose against the 76ers January 15th. They lose against the Hawks January 21. And the Hawks aren't even in a quality win. They're just, they, the Hawks have kind of caught fire. I have thought about kind of um, counting the Hawks inside quality wins um, since kind of like January onward. But, uh, you know, we're not going to do that. We're just kind of sticking to the top six just because the Hawks have kind of truly turned a corner the last kind of month, month and a half. Um, so, yeah, their last quality win, I mean, we're talking about January 8th. And, folks, that's, you know, what we've been talking about. They have not kind of lived up to what they did so well in the early part of the season since, you know, the last month, month and a half-ish. So, yeah, they've got 10 quality wins, so we give the Heat credit for that. But not one as of recently. And they've kind of faced some good teams. The 76ers on January 15th. They faced the Raptors January 29th. They faced the Celtics January 31st. They beat the uh, they played the Raptors again February 1st. Lost. They beat they played the Mavericks February 15th. That was their last good quality opponent potentially to beat. And they lost it by about eight points. So this uh, Heat team definitely got to kind of, you know, re-kick it back into gear. And this is a great kind of moment for this Heat team. Everybody kind of take a deep breath in. Exhale. All righty. We, we hit a little bit of a rough patch. Maybe some turbulence at the, uh, you know, the final three weeks of the season leading up to the All-Star break. But now we can rely on our leaders on the floor. Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry. Uh, shout out to Eric Spolster, a great coach that really should have this team refocused in after the All-Star break, after their rest. So I think we can kind of rely on this Heat team. Um, after the All-Star break, but we still have to see it before we truly buy into it. So I'm going to put this Heat team, I'm going to put them at number five, folks. Um, we have the open four spot, but I am going to kind of leave a spot ahead of them because I just think there can be a team that we see better than this Heat team because, uh, once again, they've left a little bit of a bad taste in our mouth as we kind of headed into the All-Star break. So we'll see what other team comes up next and if we can kind of put them at number four, if we have to move the Heat up to number four because nobody's kind of outpacing the Heat. But we'll see how it all plays out. But I am going to kind of leave a little bit of a spot there. We'll put Heat at number five and see how we have to order it up until this point. All righty. All right. So next game up here, or next team up, is the Chicago Bulls. Oh, no. What did I got going on here? Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right. The Chicago Bulls. All righty. They are currently 38 and 21, second in the Eastern Conference at the current moment. But man, oh man, can we shout out DeMar DeRozan, folks? This man is MVP candidate, candidate. Uh, obviously, we got Joe Kick and Joel Embiid at kind of, you know, the forefront. But DeMar DeRozan really should be kind of considered number three option. I'm not saying he should win it. He should be in the conversation at the very, very minimum. Love what we've been seeing from uh, DeMar DeRozan. Let's get his uh, season averages up here. I'm going to say 28, 6, and 5. Are we going 28, 6, and 5? We got 28, 5, and 5. So, I mean, he's getting it done, folks, truly. Being that offensive powerhouse, we've seen multiple, multiple, multiple 35-plus point nights by the man picking up the slack. We've seen kind of Lonzo Ball in and out of the lineup here. They've still got Zach Levine and Vucevic, but overall picking up the slack, Lonzo Ball out and all that. Now, with Lonzo Ball being out, we don't really mind because we love their depth of guards. We kind of were championing at the trade deadline the Bulls trading Lonzo Ball. 
I kind of would have liked to see, honestly, now that I'm kind of re-going back on it, I think I would have liked to see the Bulls trade with the Lakers, give Lonzo Ball to the Lakers, Lakers give them something, they don't need anything too much. Maybe a little bit of uh, bench depth at the big position, maybe. The the Lakers don't have anything great at that. You're not trading Anthony Davis, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I think, I, you know, Lonzo Ball to the Lakers, that would have been fine because we get Ayo Dasunmu. I mean, this man is fantastic. And then we get Kobe White, who's also fantastic. We love Kobe White. So both of these guards can get it done. They can facilitate the floor. And that's the main thing they needed to do. Just facilitate the floor. They've got the scores. You got Zach Levine. You got DeMar DeRozan. You got uh, Vucevic down low. You don't need to be the score at the point guard position. Uh, you really just need to facilitate the floor. And Ayo Dasunmu, uh, Dasunmu and Kobe White can both facilitate the floor, folks. Um, but they also can score the ball a little bit at a better efficiency than Lonzo Ball overall. Lonzo Ball, I think, gets a little bit carried away shooting the ball, you know, and you're just taking away shots from Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. Like, you don't want to do that. You just want to facilitate the floor. Yes, you can score when you need to, but look at what Chris Paul's doing. You know, 14, uh, 14 points, 10 assists, getting it done, not being, you know, the main focus, not trying to be the main scorer of this team on a gamely basis. Leave that up to the actual great shooting stars on this Bulls team. So, really don't mind Lonzo Ball being out. Love the depth here of this Bulls team. And we just got Derrick Jones Jr. back. Yeah, yeah, love that man. Good defender. He's really athletic as heck, can really do it all. And he doesn't need to be kind of the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. He's kind of just needs to be maybe the seventh, eighth scoring option for this team. So, that's fantastic for Derrick Jones Jr. We get Tristan Thompson. Yeah, a little bit of depth there. We'll give him credit. So, uh, just a really good team overall, very deep, and uh, the guard plays fantastic, and we're getting kind of the superstars doing what they do, and that's scoring the ball and winning games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, love everything about this Bulls roster, absolutely love it, and uh, if they have more than uh, 10 quality wins here, I'm putting this Bulls team at maybe, maybe I would even consider the third seed, uh, but definitely the fourth seed, so I'm glad that we did leave a spot uh, there because I like this Bulls team already better than I like the Heat. But uh, uh, let's see how many quality wins this Bulls team has. Hopefully they've got a lot. I don't want to see them just beating bad teams, folks. That's going to kind of leave a bad taste in their mouth, and we won't put them at four. We'll put them at six, and we won't even think about putting them at three. So here we go, this Bulls team. Let's count quality wins, hoping for some good ones here, a lot of them, a lot of good ones. Here we go. They beat the Pistons, the Pelicans, the Pistons, the Raptors, the Jazz. There we go. The Celtics. There we go. Two quality wins. But then they lose back-to-back -to, -back to the 76ers. Okay, okay. They beat the Nets. They beat the Mavericks. They beat the Clippers, the Lakers. They beat the Nuggets. Yes, sir. That's another quality win. They beat the Knicks. They beat the Magic. They beat the Hornets, the Knicks, the Nets, the Nuggets again. Another one. That's five. Uh, they beat the Lakers, the Rockets, the Pacers, the Hawks, the Hawks, the Pacers, the Wizards, the Magic, the Wizards. They lose against the Mavericks. They beat the Pistons. They beat the Cavs. That's a quality win. They beat the Thunder. They beat the Raptors. They beat the Blazers. They beat the Magic. They beat the Pacers. They beat the Hornets. They beat the Timberwolves. They beat the Thunder. They beat the Spurs. They beat the Kings. Oh, my. Are you telling me this Bulls team only has six quality wins? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I did not think it was this low! Oh no! Oh no! Oof! Oof! That's big bad, folks. Six quality wins here? Oh, that's bad. That's real light. That's real bad. Man, oh man, over the last month, they've lost to the 76ers, they've lost to the Suns, they lost to the Raptors, they lost to the Spurs, they lost to the Magic, they lost to the Bucks, they lost to the Grizzlies, they lost to the Celtics. That's like the last month, folks. So they could have added another kind of four or five there, and they didn't. Oof. Their last quality win was against... Ugh, their last quality win, oh my goodness, the Cavs, January 19th, so I mean, we've got a month without a quality win, oh Bulls, oh Bulls, oh Bulls, that's big time disappointing, so not gonna move them into number three. Oh, I did not think it was that low, I did not think those quality wins were that light, wow, alrighty, well... 
like oh I like the depth of the Bulls. I do. I think it's good depth, but you know, what is depth if you're losing good losing against good teams? That's not anything impressive. So I got to put this Bulls team at number six. That four spot is still available. We can shift teams up, and that's what we may have to do here. But I'm putting the Bulls here at number six. Man, oh, man. He's still at five. We'll keep the four spot open. Wow, that's disappointing. Oof, no quality wins there by the Bulls. Truly disappointing. All righty, let's go to this Jazz team. Next team up here. Here we go. This Jazz team, they, uh, you know, have been a little bit lackluster the last, you know, two, three weeks with uh, no Rudy Gobert, no Donovan Mitchell. The Jazz are still kind of deep, but those are their leaders on the floor. And we saw when both of those t uh, players were out, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, they just weren't winning games at the clip that they were with them out on the floor. Now, we did just get Rudy Gobert back in their last game, and they lost it. So that's not great either. Um, so they definitely have to clean everything up. We have to see Rudy Gobert back being good, but the man can't even guard in the perimeter, and that's kind of why they lost against the... Uh, <laughs> That's why they lost against the Lakers in their last game. So we get Donovan Mitchell and we get Rudy Gobert back heading after the All-Star break. So that's good. Uh, you know, they were back together on the floor in their last game. But, you know, that was Rudy Gobert's first game back. That was Donovan Mitchell's, like, second, third game back. So get re at, re getting reacclimated to the starting lineup in the role and the rhythm of the game. Uh, so we can expect this Jazz team to be a little bit better after the All-Star break. But once again, we have to see it before we truly start believing it. But this Jazz team, they're deep. I mean, uh, the the starting lineup, Mike Connolly, Donovan Mitchell, Bohan Bogdanovich, Royce O'Neal, Rudy Gobert. I mean, that's a really good starting five. Then you bring in Jordan Clarkson. You bring in Rudy Gay. You bring in Hassan Whiteside. They just get Nikhil Alexander-Walker. You get Daniel House Jr. I mean, we, we've got, you got Eric Poshkel. I mean, folks, this is a deep-ass hack team. And they were still, they got Juancho Hernana Gomez. I mean, there it is, folks. Uh, so, at the trade deadline, they trade Joe Ingles. They get Rid of, you know, a horse with a broken leg, and that's what he is at the current moment. It's unfortunate, and, you know, he's had a great career, but it may, unfortunately, come a little up short. Maybe ending a little bit sooner than everybody has expected, and that's truly unfortunate. A little, a little disrespectful by the Jazz just to be like, oh, you can't play no more? All right, get the hell, get the hell out of here. We, we got we to gotta replace you. We can't just have this, this, uh, this chair occupied by somebody that just tore his ACL. We can't be having that, especially at your age. Joe Ingles can't be having that on a roster. Got to get out of here. Let's bring in some other younger uh, talent here. So this Jazz team, absolutely deep as heck. Love it. And now they are all truly healthy. All right, now let's count their uh, quality wins. What do we got quality wins-wise with this Jazz team? We got anything good? Hopefully we get more than six. You get more than six. I can put you at number four. I'm still looking for that number four spot. Uh, you know, Jazz are deeper than the Heat. Jazz are deeper than the Heat. I think I'm comfortable saying that. Yeah, oh yeah, overall, the Heat can be as deep as this Jazz, but we got, we got to see their depth, their role players be good again. We see this Jazz team being consistent. Their role players just needed a, kind of their leadership back. Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, they got it back. All right, here we go. Let's count their quality wins. Here we go. They got wins against the Thunder, the Kings, the Nuggets. There it is, quality win number one. The Bucks. Oh, yeah, I love that. Uh, they beat the Kings, the Hawks. They beat the Hawks again. They beat the 76ers, quality win. They beat the Raptors. They beat the Kings. They beat the Thunder. They beat the Pelicans. They beat the Blazers. They beat the Celtics, quality win. They beat the Cavs, quality win. They beat the Timberwolves. The 76ers, another quality win. We're at six already. All right, here we go. They beat the Wizards, the Clippers, the Hornets, the Timberwolves, the Mavericks, quality win. The Spurs, the Blazers, the Timberwolves, the Pelicans, the Nuggets, quality win. Uh, they beat the Nuggets again, quality win. They beat the Pistons. They beat the Nuggets again. That's 10. They beat the Knicks. They beat the Warriors. Quality win. They beat the Magic in the Rockets. So that's 11 quality wins. And, I mean, this is the losing stretch that we're talking about, folks. I mean, from January 1st up until January 30th, that month of January, I mean, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 losses, and 1, 2, 3, 4 wins. 4 in 12 over the month of January. So no Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, I believe, were out during that period of time. 
Um, and then, you know, rattled off some wins as of recently. Went on a nice one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, finished out the season six and one. Heading into the All-Star break. Getting Donovan Mitchell back and all that. So, this Jazz team, yeah, 11 quality wins. Love seeing that. They're deep. They're back at kind of full strength. We just need Rudy Gobert just to be way better defensively on the perimeter. And that's really going to be the downfall of the, of the Jazz because Rudy Gobert has not been able to do that his entire career. Even winning Defensive Player of the Year almost every single season. Rudy Gobert in the conversation every single season. Rudy Gobert is good down low in the clutch. Eh, questionable on the perimeter. Big time questionable. Big woofing. That's a big old woof. Uh, Rudy Gobert guarding the perimeter. So, we like this Jazz team. We They've got the pieces, but we need Rudy Gobert to be a better defending big out here. Especially since, say it with me folks, this is a big's world. This is a big's world. And it'd be nothing. Nothing. Without another big on your team. I mean, you need bigs here, folks. It's a bigs world. Say it with me. Sing it with us, folks, okay? So, I will put the Jazz. I will put the Jazz at number four. But Rudy Gobert, Rudy Gobert, you're on a short leash here. You're on a short leash. What's their first game after the All-Star break? Because this truly could be the deciding factor. Because I, I would have no problem. I'll put the Jazz here at number four. But then if they lose that first game, I'll drop them out of the top ten. And Rudy Gobert will have to truly climb Mount Everest to get back into our good graces. This Jazz team. Here we go. Uh, their next opponent is the Mavericks. Okay, Rudy Gobert. The, there's threes all over the floor, so good luck with that, okay? That's all the Mavericks do. They shoot the threes. The big shoot the three. You better be guarding that three-point line. You lose to this Mavericks team, Jazz, and uh, you got the Jazz and the Suns. Oh, yeah, this is perfect, folks. This is exactly what we want to see. We'll give the Jazz the benefit of the doubt here and put them at number four for the current moment, uh, but you got the Mavericks and the Suns coming up out of the break. Good luck with that, Rudy Gobert. You better get it done. Now, the the, the Suns, DeAndre in the three is not his game, so he should have a little bit more success there. But against that Mavericks team, hopefully they can stop the barrage that is the three-point shooting shot of this Mavericks team. So, Jazz, they got the fourth spot here, folks. They do have spot number four. We'll see if they can keep it. All righty, next team up here. We got the 76ers. Ooh, yeah. All righty. Love this 76ers team. Joel Embiid. This is a big world. Yes? And it's all Joel Embiid. Yes? Love it. So, Joel Embiid, obviously, uh, they got a little less deep because they traded Seth Curry and Andre Drummond. I don't love I don't love that they traded, traded Andre Drummond. I love them, and I don't mind them trading Seth Curry because you were bringing in James Harden. But, uh, you know, Andre Drummond has been fantastic coming off the bench. The resurgence of the older bigs. It's, well, it's not just the starting bigs, folks. It's JaVale McGee. It's uh, Andre Drummond. It's uh, There's one more. Hassan Whiteside's kind of been getting it done for the Jazz. Shout out to that. I mean, we're talking about older bigs. Older bigs. Kevin Love. Kevin Love back into it with the Cavs. It's the bigs, folks. They're here. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Starters, bench, everywhere. It's the bigs, folks. This is a bigs world. So, uh, yeah, 76ers, I didn't love that they traded Andre Drummond, but they are still, you know, good. The overall starting lineup is very good. This is a really good starting lineup. They're not deep. They're not as deep as, you know, uh, the Jazz or who else did we say was deep? Uh, the number one team. Suns are pretty deep. Uh, Grizzlies deep. Uh, yeah, so this 76ers team isn't as deep as them, as those teams. But uh, the starting lineup is fantastic. Tyrese Maxey, um, who's probably going to be filling in at the one. I would probably say James Harden goes to the one. Tyrese Maxey goes to the two. Uh, ESPN sees it differently. They have uh, Tyrese Maxey at the one, James Harden at the two. 
Um, I would assume, you know, um, James Harden would facilitate the floor like he did with the Nets and still score and still rebound and still assist. I mean, I'm, sh I'm assuming he's going to do exactly what he did with the Nets. Uh, so you slide Tyrese Maxey to the two, but however you slice it, Tyrese Maxey's great. He can shoot the ball. He can facilitate the floor. James Harden can shoot. He can facilitate the floor. We get Matisse Dybul, uh Tobias Harris, who can hit the three. Good defender. And then we get Joel Embiid. So I love the starting five here. Then we go down to the bench. Shake Milton, solid. Firkin Korkmaz, solid. Danny Green, good defender. I hate I hate his offensive game. He's a good defender, though. Love that he's not in the starting lineup anymore. Um, and then we get Georges Niang, who, who really needs to kind of step up a little bit more. You know, we kind of... We called for Doc Rivers' head when they lost against the Celtics, uh, but then he put Georges Niang in the starting lineup in their last game before the All-Star break, and they get the win. So well, I love Georges Niang. Got to see him be a little bit better out here. But overall, it's a solid... Um, it's a solid uh, depth of bench. It's nothing great, nothing to write home about. Really still have to rely on their starters on a nightly basis to get it done. But overall, some decent relief help out here. And uh, that's going to come interesting into play. James Harden, the fatigue, not getting the calls in the postseason. Joel Embiid, we had the nickname Joel Fatigue last season in the playoffs. We'll see how that plays out. So the depth bench, the depth here, the lack of the depth, the lack of great depth, the winning depth for the 76ers team may be into question as we head into the postseason. We'll see how they kind of come out after the break and how James Harden kind of uh, fluctuates with this team and integrates into this team. I think I think it's going to be plug and play fantastic, folks. I really think James Harden and uh, Joel Embiid will truly get it done. And uh, everybody else just kind of fall into line on what needs to be done. Because once you have James Harden and Joel Embiid, I mean, that's the offense, folks. Yes, I mean, we don't need Tyrese Maxey. We don't need Tobias Harris. We still need them. But, I mean, they're not going to be, you know, taking 20 shots a game. I mean, this is going to be James Harden and Joel Embiid. But, uh, you know, we'll see how it all turns out. But I'm, I'm kind of banking it's going to be really gosh dang good. So, love the starting lineup. Depth. Eh, okay-ish. Uh, let's quickly see what they've got quality wins-wise, shall we? Here we go. Here we go. They got wins against the Pelicans, the Thunder, the Pistons, the Hawks, the Blazers, the Bulls. There it is. The Bulls again. There's another one. Two quality wins. Uh, they beat the Nuggets. Quality win. They beat the Kings. They beat the Magic, the Hawks, the Hornets twice in a row. The Warriors. That's a quality win. The Celtics, a quality win. We got wins against the Wizards, the Raptors, the Nets, the Rockets, the Magic, the Spurs, the Rockets. Good stretch against bad teams right there. Then they go and beat the Celtics. Bingo, bango. They beat the Heat. Bingo, bango. We're at seven. Uh, they beat the Magic, the Spurs, the Pelicans, the Lakers, the Kings, the Grizzlies. Quality win. That's eight. Bulls. Quality win. That's nine. Thunder. Cavs. Another quality win. And then they end beating the Bucks for 11 quality wins. Love that. See, this is why the Bulls, man, super to six. You do six quality wins? The hell is that? So, 76ers with 11 quality wins. Love seeing that. Love their starting lineup. This is a big world. This is a big world. And it would be nothing, nothing without Joel, Mother, Loving, and Bede. So, love this 76ers team. And uh, we're going to put them above the Bulls. I'm going to put them above the Heat. And I'm going to put them above the Jazz. So we're going to have to kind of move some teams back here. So Bulls go to seven. Bulls go to seven. Heat go to six. We get the Jazz going to five, dropping everybody down one. And actually, actually, yeah, this is what I'm doing, folks. I'm moving the Warriors down to four. And I'm putting the 76ers team at number three. Yes, sir. 76ers are the third best team. So... Love everything they bring to the table. Love Joel Embiid, the Bigs, the James Harden. Yes, sir. Doc Rivers, you must bring and tie this all together. Yes. 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 Answer me, Doc. <laughs> Answer me, Doc. I'm not moving on until you say yes. Yes, Doc. Get it together. Actually be able to be a good coach and not just rely on good talent. Yes. Yes, my Docky, Docky Rivers, boy, yeah. So, Doc Rivers, do not hold this 76ers team back. Please, please, please. 76ers, I'm putting them at number three, folks. 
Alrighty, we got three more spots open, folks. Let's see what teams take and claim them. So here we go. Next team up, we've got the Cavs. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Love this Cavs team. Jared Allen, fantastic. Um, and, you know, they've overcome injuries, folks. It was, um, uh, who was it? Uh, Darius Garland is the one that is good. It's Darius Garland who's the other guard that's so gosh dang good. It's Darius Garland and... Bah. Darius Garland and... Bah, 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 bah. Why is his name not on the list? I can get an O out for the season. Give me that. I'm blanking on this man's name. Damn. Fantastic. Darius Garland... And who else? Man, oh, man. Whoever it is, blanking on the name, truly unfortunate, great guard, all that. They lose him real early on in the season, so Darius Garland has to step up his production, and he does. Evan Mobley, the rookie. Yes, sir. Getting it done, playing the four, putting up some points. What do we got? Is this man averaging, like, 12, 7, and 3? I would say 12, 7, and 3. Oh, my God, better. 14, 15. I'll round it up. 15, 8, and 2. Yes, yes, yes. I freaking undersold Evan Mobley. Shout out to the rookie. Yeah, folks, love it. So the big three, Darius Garland, Mobley, Jared Allen. I'll take that big three, folks. And then you had Karis LeVert at the trade deadline. Ooh, yeah. We get Rondo finally playing the season, getting it done. Kevin Love, folks. Do not sleep on Kevin Love. The bigs, folks, like we said, it's not just the starting big. It's the bench. Averaging 14, 7, and 2. Coming off the bench. Love it. And also, C.D. Osmond. He can give us some nice shooting performances. I don't think he's averaging double digit. Oh, he is. 10 points. Yeah, off the... Ooh. Shout out to C.D. Osmond. I mean, this is a bunch of role players on this team, but they win games, folks. We gotta respect the winnability here by this Cavs team now the how we rank this team in the power rankings is truly going to determine going to be determined by their quality wins we know they win but are they actually beating the good teams are they beating the playoff caliber teams we're hoping so I don't want another surprise like the Bulls only having six quality wins I don't want anything like that so here we go Cavs I'm talking 10 plus please show me 10 plus Quality wins, and I could, I could, I could catapult them. Hi, folks. We got the eighth spot. That's the next spot open. And if they have under 10, they might be at number eight. But here we go. Counting the quality wins for this Cavs team. Here we go. Cavs have wins against the Hawks, the Nuggets. There we go. That's number one. The Hornets, the Blazers, the Raptors, the Knicks, the Pistons, the Celtics. That's a quality win. Ooh, look at this loss streak. Ooh. Celtics, Nets, Warriors, Nets, Suns. Ooh, some quality teams in there missing your chance. Then we're back at wins with the Magic, the Mavericks, the Heat. Quality wins. Bingo, bango. The Wizards. The Bulls, quality wins. The Timberwolves, the Kings, the Heat again, quality win. The Rockets, the Bucks, oh, what a quality win. The Raptors, the Pacers, the Blazers, the Kings, the Jazz, quality win. The Spurs, the Thunder, the Nets, the Thunder, the Knicks, the Bucks again, quality win. The Pelicans wins against the Hornets, the Pacers, the Spurs, the Pacers again. Oh, but losing against the 76ers in their final two games. Um, and that would have been number 10. That would have been win quality win number 10. But we're leaving at nine quality wins for this Cavs team. So, okay. Would have loved to see maybe two more. One or two more. Nine quality wins by this Cavs team. Got to respect it. Got to love it. And, um, yeah, okay, so we've got a decision to make here, folks. We've got a decision to make. We've got the eighth spot open, but I'm going to move the Bulls down to number eight here. I'm taking the Cavs over the Bulls, folks. Those six quality wins, that's the most glaring, alarming thing I've ever seen in my life. And I truly was not expecting that, folks, and that's why we do this live. I like to do things live. I like to sh throw, show my thought process live, folks. Um, so this Bulls team at number uh, six quality wins, that's leaving a real bad taste in my mouth. So I'm going to drop the Bulls back to eight. That leaves the seventh spot open. Now, do we move the Heat back to seven, put the Cavs at six, or do we keep the Heat at six and move the Cavs to seven? I can't put this Cavs team at number five or above the Jazz, the Warriors, 76ers, or the Suns, or the Grizzlies. So this Cavs team... 
uh, they did end their season on, or they did end the first half of the season on a two-game loss. Uh, two games losses to the Hawks and the 76ers. Their last quality win was uh, against the Bucks, January 26th. That's a really good quality win right there. Dominant quality win, winning 115-99. 16-point win. Sheesh, sheesh. That's fantastic. Ugh. Ugh, this Heat team. Mm, mm. They've also left a bad taste in their mouth as well. When was this? Uh, what did the Heat end the season on? The first half of the season? They beat the Hornets, lost to the Mavericks. Their last quality win was... <sighs> um, Heat's last quality win was against uh, the Suns, January 8th. That was their last quality win. Good go quality win, 23-100. to 100. Ugh, ugh, Cavs or the Heat... Very close, folks, but I'm going to put this Cavs team at number seven. I wish I could put them at number six and move the Heat back one, but Heat having that extra quality win. Cavs, a little bit of a more recent quality win, but we know this Heat team has hit a rough patch. This Cavs team losing, the, losing their last two games. Uh, I'm going to give it to the Cavs. I am going to switch them. I'm going to put the Heat at 6 and the Cavs at 7. Heat at 7, Cavs at 6. We're going to switch them, and I'm going to give you know the Cavs the benefit of the doubt. And, uh, you know, they just won the skills challenge. They won the skills challenge in the All-Star break. So, mm, tiebreaker? Do we count that as a tiebreaker? No, but uh, this Cavs team, I'm going to give them a little bit of credit here. Like I said, the Heat losing that kind of title of dogs and all that, the kennel nickname and all that, ugh, they're going to have to earn that back, and they're going to have to earn that kind of six seed back as well. So, I'm going to put the Cavs at six. I'm going to give them credit for beating the Bull or the Bucks very recently. Alrighty, what do we want to do here, folks? Going a little late, a little late-ish, 125-ish, eh, not bad. Uh, what, how, many t how many teams do we got to go over? One, two, three, four, five, six more teams. Do we save this for tomorrow's show? I think we're going to split it up into two parts, folks. Let's uh, leave it there. Let's leave it here. Let's leave it here, yeah? We'll leave it here. Re-up it on tomorrow. Finish it out tomorrow. We'll do the back end. Final two spots. Let's see who claims these final two spots. Still has six teams left to talk about, folks. We've got the Bucks, the Mavericks, the Nuggets, the Celtics, the Raptors, and the Timberwolves. Is that seven teams? I, did I leave one out? Uh, Bucks, Mavericks, Nuggets. Yeah, six Celtics, Raptors, Timberwolves. Bucks, Mavericks, Nuggets, Celtics, Raptors, Timberwolves. Yeah, so I just miscounted. Yeah, so we got six teams left to talk about. Break them down, all that. Two more spots to go. Uh, you know, uh, these teams can move their way out. You know, we've got no problem with that. Uh, we could definitely, you know, the the Bucks are probably definitely claiming a spot here. And then, you know, we, we'll see who else claims that last one. But we may be moving some teams out here on this list to make some way for some other teams here. Um, but, um, yeah, I think we're going to leave it here. We'll do part one. This was a good part one. I think we did this for like an hour, so that's good. Uh, we'll have part two coming up tomorrow. See how we finish off the top ten. Tuesday, we will walk through it, walk through the playoffs and all that. Wednesday, we'll gear up for Thursday, and then Thursday's the big day. So, we'll leave it here, folks. We'll do this in two parts. So, I think we're good. I think we're good here for today. So, this is our power rankings for part one here. We got the Suns at one, the Grizzlies at two, the 76ers at three, Warriors four, Jazz five, Cavs six, Heat seven, and the Bulls at number eight. And the Bulls may be falling off here, folks. So, if you're a Bulls fan, don't get too excited with this Bulls team at number eight. 